Hey everyone, Del Toyn here. Uh, it's quite hot out. Um, the two videos I was editing to upload got pushed aside by work. Um, I got contracted to basically go back through 2017 and make sure all of our oil drain logs for our ammonia system is um, correct. So that's going to take, they want it done by Friday, so I have to go through an entire year of oil draining, which is supposed to be done once a week, plus any time in between, and I have to get every date that that was done, also I've got to get it, the amount that was drained and how much ammonia was lost, so I have to do that by Friday. So on top of there's been a couple major malfunctions at work with uh, equipment, uh, our boiler shut down from a short, fixed that, easy. Um, the other thing was the uh, water tower stopped filling, primarily because the um, controller got a short in it, which took out a solid state relay, it took out a uh, the wiring that goes out for the closing or opening, I think the opening side of the wiring out and the closing side has a short together. Um, and also took out the motor that, or the actuator on the motor. Um, primary, I think it all started with the uh, seal on the actuator leaking into the actual actuator. Uh, the actuator valve housing leaked water into the actual actuator itself, which started shorting. And I think it started there, but you know, there's no clear way to figure it out. So anyway, um, that was all done. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. I don't know. My camera wanted to shut down. My uh, dash cam won't shut down. We are in the Pathfinder today. The junky Pathfinder. We have to clean it out. Like I said, I've driven, I've driven this thing for like at least two months. Let's see. I officially started working on the uh, Ram April. Early April, late March. No, 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 no. It was before March because I wanted to take it. I wanted to take it somewhere else. So it was before March. So I actually started in February. I officially started working on it in February. I just didn't get anything major done to it until March. Um, and I, so, so I guess you can say since late February, early March, is I've been working on the Ram, but driving this, and I think in early March or late no late March early April is when I started driving the ramp and I drove it every day um, today we have to put fuel in this and we have to run some errands because we haven't driven this um, it's running and idling just fine AC is cool so we're gonna run those errands but I wanted to talk about something that um, I gotta get used to power steering from electric steering. Um, I wanted to talk about something that uh, I had not done in a while, which is I oh god, I got a scrap. Um, I have not done a parasitic draw diagnosis um, uh, intermittent, intermittent start diagnosis or a uh, I guess you could say transmission diagnosis in general I haven't done any of those in a while um, I got to do that yesterday with uh, my boss or well, my uh, landlord's uh, GMC Arcadia uh, it's got an 8 amp it has an 8 amp draw on it um, and that's with the engine, with the car off, key out, everything. It's got an 8 amp draw on it. Uh, the scan tool says a negative 8.6 amps. The uh, meter says a negative uh, 8 something. 8, 8 something to 9. So roughly an 8.5 amp draw. So something in the truck is drawing amperage while it's sitting there. Because she drove it that Friday night. And then Sunday night, or well, Sunday, the battery was at 11.9 volts. 
Now, yes, the battery will drop sitting stationary, but your battery should not drop 12 point, I mean, if you, good charging, 13, 14 volts. Your battery should not go from 13, 14, 13, 14 volts to 11.9 volts in a day to two days. It shouldn't do that. Not with everything off in the truck. Eventually, uh, actually, essentially what it would do is it would trickle down to about maybe 12. Um, but you could get in the car and most of the time if you, had a, if you got a good battery, it shouldn't and you could still start it. Um, her car would intermittently start and it was primarily because her car's battery was too low. Now, this is the thing I, I, I have to stress to those that don't understand when it comes to diagnosing an electric fault. Um, you have um, you have YouTube channels out there that completely go into detail about explaining it. Um, you got New Level Auto. You have um, uh, oh god, I got to get used to these brakes. I've not driven them. Okay, here we go. The four liter and the three six have completely different takeoffs. But you have New Level Auto, you have uh, South Main Auto, you have, uh, I'm looking at traffic. You, you've got plenty of uh, YouTube mechanics out there that actually do diagnostics work in general. And you have a lot of them that have gone into, not just explaining, but actually giving you case studies that they've done personally on these. Um, and essentially, what you what you'll be told from any one of them, you get told from any one of them. You can't diagnose an intermittent start problem if you can't basically with any kind of repair in general. You can't repair that kind of electrical fault without having the ability to reenact that or re or verify that complaint. So, for instance, if you have that, all I have to go on is um, you have a low battery from you from it sitting. I verify that it has a parasitic draw, uh, a big one. Um, I verify that, um, but every single time I've started it, it does not have a intermittent start. It starts every single time. Uh, the battery voltage does drop to 10.5 to 11. Um, I recommended a battery. Or having the battery checked at the store that she bought it from because it was a it's a five-year warranty battery and I tried to explain which any mechanic will tell you just because it says five years on it does not mean that battery is guaranteed for five years that battery could range anywhere for uh, seven eight years or it could only last one year um, it, it has nothing to do with all that sticker uh, so if you can't verify the complaint that a person's having, you can't diagnose that. So, as I haven't done uh, basically a starting diagnosis in a while, I've rarely had that. Um, I got to thinking, okay, maybe I should, you know, make a vlog and make it to where it's understandable why. Because I've seen a lot of customers at mechanic shops and um, or word of mouth mechanics and they complain because that person or that shop can't fix their problem you got to understand something people it's like taking your phone to the shop I mean take your phone to the dealer taking your phone to the place which is where I'm at now I'm I'm I, I have to pay my phone bill if they can't when you go to do a warranty they can't do a warranty without verifying the issue that you have. Like, say if the screen flickers out. Is it flickering out when it gets hot? They can't reenact it, so they can't warranty it out. It's the same thing as with your car. They can't fix a problem they can't find. Um, not all problems come with a check engine light. Just because it ha doesn't have a check engine light doesn't mean it doesn't have a problem. Now, you do get the mechanics and the dealerships that go, if I can't get a check engine light I can't fix it um sad to say a lot of dealerships are like that where if they don't have a check engine light they can't work on it um and the reason for that I'm gonna explain that for a second 
the reason for that is mechanic shops do not make money off of diagnosing your issues. They do not make money doing that. Um, the only people that make money from you by diagnostics is um, places like uh, like Erico or uh, New Level Auto. They're the ones that actually will make more money off of diagnostics before a dealership will. A dealership makes more money off of taking off your alternator. Well, let's find something different. Uh, uh, like, for instance, even if you have already bought the battery and you need it installed, say if you bought it online but you need it installed because for some reason you don't know how to install a battery but you can order one, you could take it to maybe, you could say take it to Erico and he'll probably change it for free because you put the battery in for it, you're more than likely to come back to him and for any other issues you might have. You take it to a dealership, even if you bought the battery, some dealerships won't even put that battery in dealerships that will let you put that battery in they're going to charge you for putting that battery in dealerships make more money from taking parts off your car and putting stuff on your car than actually diagnosing what the issue is now if you're going to be repairing that vehicle through the dealership yes they're more than likely to help you diagnose it but you have to pay attention to dealerships and places like that because that diagnostic fee may not be an upfront cost. Um, the dealership for my Ram, it's $100 for one hour of um, diagnostics. If they cannot find anything, you do get charged, but you can request another look at it and they will hold it for another day or two looking at it until they can find something. If they still can't find out in the two days, you only pay the $100 even though they've looked at it. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to look at it for those two days. They might look at it once in those two days, but they will look at it again. Again. But they will do it again. Um, some dealerships will just keep diagnosing and diagnosing until they find it, and they'll charge you out the yin-yang. Um, but, guys, if you have an intermittent issue, when you have an issue, try to record whatever information that happens at that time. If your car does that and the check engine light comes on, what's your RPM doing? What speed are you doing? Are there any other warning gauges on there? Is there anything else acting weird? Did your AC stop? Is your car jerking? Is it is it doing anything? Those help the mechanic determine what it is that is going on with your car. Because the only thing I can get out of my manager was that if I turn the key on, uh, everything comes on and it doesn't start. I don't know what that means because that's how every car operates. When you turn the key, does the does the radio go out? Does the AC stop? Do the lights in the dash go out? Those are kind of things to let me know, okay, it's getting the signal to turn on, but it's nothing happening. Um, the only thing you can tell me is it doesn't make a noise. That doesn't really mean anything in today's vehicle with the mobilizers. Um, some cars have this a mobilizer where if your battery level is too low it won't even try to start the vehicle which is what her car has um, so the first time she tried to start it the battery level is too low the second time she tries to start it for some reason it will let it start and it starts it again uh, I think she turns off her AC and everything else again the second time and it starts but guys if you have an intermittent issue you can't get upset with a mechanic because they can't fix your issue if they can't duplicate, they can't fix it. Um, I mean, you got to you got to give them a break at some point to where, remember, you're taking your car to them because you can't figure out the issue. So you have you can't figure out the issue, and it's happening with you. How can you expect them to figure out the issue if it's not happening with them? Um, if you have mechanics that specialize in diagnostics. They will probably find the issue, but you got to remember, you have to find those mechanics. You can't just take it to any mechanic and expect them to diagnose your issue. Um, I'm going to go in here and pay this bill because i got to get fuel in this because she's, she's running low. And um, get this done. And it's a really nice Jeep here. It's trail rated. So I'm going to go head out, pay this bill, and hopefully start the editing if I don't pass out on the 
thingamajigger to bobber. Yeah. I'm tired. I haven't been to sleep yet. What do you expect? <laughs>